Mont Blanc Tunnel Fire, a death trap 2,480 meters under the Alps. In the middle of a quiet Wednesday morning, the 11-kilometer tunnel linking the French town of Chamonix and the Italian town of Courmayeur burst into flames. Within minutes, a truck fire spread through the tunnel, creating a deadly trap for everyone inside. A total of 39 people died from the intense heat and dense toxic smog. In this episode, we'll take a look at the disastrous chain of events that led to the Mont Blanc tunnel fire. Was it a tragic freak accident or a disaster waiting to happen? Construction of the tunnel began with blasting in 1959. It took nearly four years of work before the French and Italian construction teams met in the middle under the Alps' highest mountain, the Mont Blanc. Finishing the internal work took another three years. This included paving the road, installing technical equipment, and building the two tunnel entrance aprons. On completion, it quickly became a proud symbol of unity between European countries. On July 19, 1965, at 6 a.m., the Mont Blanc Tunnel was officially open for traffic. It is currently used by up to 2 million cars each year. In the morning of March 24, 1999, the tunnel had quite a bit of traffic passing through, including the ill-fated margarine truck driven by a Belgian man named Gilbert de Grave. At 10.46 a.m., de Grave's truck passed the toll booth on the French side. Everything appeared to be normal. He had loaded 9 tons of liquid margarine and 13 tons of flour as cargo. While driving through the tunnel, he noticed that drivers passing him in the opposite direction were flashing their headlights at him. Confused, de Grave checked his mirrors for a problem. There was white smoke billowing out from underneath the cab of his truck. It was now 10.49 a.m. Instead of immediately stopping the truck, the driver continued further towards the tunnel's center for four crucial minutes. De Grave was six kilometers into the tunnel when he decided to get out of his truck and try to put out the fire. Over the past 35 years, there were 16 other documented truck fires in the tunnel. Each one had been safely extinguished by the driver, until now. At 10.54 a.m., Another passing motorist stopped and called for help using one of the emergency phones on the tunnel wall. This was the point where officials first became aware of the blaze. One minute later, at 10.55 a.m., tunnel officials triggered the fire alarm, stopping other cars from entering. In the six minutes between de Grave noticing the smoke and the tunnel officials stopping traffic, multiple vehicles had entered. The stalled truck partially trapped those who entered from the French side. Meanwhile, those who entered from the Italian side could keep driving, though toxic fumes and lack of oxygen quickly became a problem for everyone inside. Unfortunately for the driver, this fire wasn't going out quickly. As he was spraying it, de Grave's truck exploded. Liquid margarine served as a catalyst to spread the blaze rapidly through the tunnel, feeding the flames. De Grave ran away in panic, a distance of nearly five kilometers to the Italian side while his truck continued to burn under the Mont Blanc. Officials struggled to control the fire and clear the traffic stuck in the underpass. An Italian tunnel worker attempted to mitigate the toxic smoke by pumping fresh air into the vent. Unfortunately, this only fed the fire with fresh oxygen and forced black smoke through the length of the tunnel. The smoke was blowing from the Italian side to the French side of the tunnel. Some of the vehicles on the Italian side were able to drive away from the disaster. However, everyone past the fire on the French side was trapped, unable to turn around. At least 10 cars and 18 trucks were standing in dense clouds of poisonous carbon monoxide and cyanide. Drivers didn't know what to do. Many of them rolled up their car windows to wait for rescue, while a few people tried to escape the smoke and flames on foot. The inside of the tunnel was pitch black because the electrical wiring had immediately melted from the heat of the burning margarine. In the darkness, everyone downwind was choking. The temperature inside the tunnel soared to a shocking 1,000 degrees Celsius, which was mainly because of the margarine load in the trailer. The blaze burned hot enough to destroy the entire infrastructure in the tunnel. Even the asphalt melted. During the next half hour, three fire crews attempted to brave the tunnel group by group. The first two groups failed after being overcome with smoke and getting stuck behind stranded vehicles. Their truck engines choked and died due to the thick smoke and lack of oxygen. 
Most of the firefighters hid inside the refuge closets located every 600 meters along the sides of the tunnel. The doors to the tiny shelters were meant to withstand fires for up to two hours. But unfortunately, the main blaze of Mont Blanc raged for five hours, and the heat was so intense the doors couldn't withstand it. The firefighters huddled in their shelter, waiting for help as burning fuel and flaming liquid margarine rolled down the road of the tunnel just beyond their melting safety doors. They could hear fuel tanks and tires exploding as the fire spread. They were eventually rescued by the third firefighting group, escaping through a ventilation duct. Miraculously, all survived except for one captain who later died in the hospital. 29 people who waited in their vehicles for help to come perished, still buckled into their seats. Nine victims attempted to escape on foot but died from toxic fumes and lack of oxygen before the flames reached them. Of the initial 50 people trapped by the fire, only 12 survived. All survivors were from the Italian side, while all people from the French side died. The fire burned for 53 hours. It took five days for temperatures to cool down enough to allow engineering teams to begin removing debris and the charred bodies of the 39 people who hadn't been able to escape. The Mont Blanc Tunnel was closed for three years after the disaster, causing significant economic losses to the region. An in-depth investigation into the fire was launched. Both the French and Italian sides did not want to accept the blame for the fire. Gag orders were given on both sides, and limited information was shared with the public. Additionally, a manslaughter investigation was launched by French officials. A group of 16 individuals and companies were tried for manslaughter in the trial. In addition to truck driver Hilbert de Grave, Volvo, the truck's manufacturer, was also investigated and added as a defendant. Other defendants in the trial included safety regulators, the mayor of nearby Chamonix, and the senior official of the French Ministry of Public Works. The French and Italian companies responsible for the safety, engineering, and operations inside the tunnel, ATMB and SITMB, were also named defendants. In 2001, a financial squad run by the French Lion Police showed that the ATMB valued money over safety. The tunnel made a large profit for the French side before the fire. The ATMB allowed as many trucks as possible to drive through, ignoring necessary safety distances between vehicles. The ATMB was found to have made a gross profit margin of 91.4% while its safety budget was almost non-existent. In the end, the court found 13 of the 16 defendants guilty. The French head of security, Gérard Roncalli, was given the strongest punishment, a six-month jail term with an additional 24-month suspended sentence. In total, nine people were given fines or suspended prison sentences, and four companies were fined. Rémy Chardon, former president of the French ATMB, was given a two-year suspended jail sentence and fined 18,000 U.S. dollars. Gilbert de Grave was given a four-month suspended sentence for his part in the fire. Volvo was cleared of any wrongdoing. The court determined the 1999 fire could have been prevented with better management and safety precautions, placing the blame squarely on the negligence and mismanagement of officials involved. After $481 million in reconstruction and carefully planned safety upgrades, the tunnel reopened to traffic on March 9, 2002. During the fire, the first alarm inside the tunnel was triggered on the Italian territory, but the French side wasn't alerted right away despite being closer to the burning truck. This lack of coordination wasted valuable time and allowed the fire to spread further and get out of control. Today, one central control facility coordinates the Italian and French response units for the entire tunnel. Alarm phones have been added every 100 meters along the tunnel, and each phone connects directly to it. In addition, there are 120 centrally monitored security cameras. A second major flaw that contributed to the deadly fire was found to be in the tunnel's architecture. The emergency shelters were not strong enough to withstand fires longer than two hours. As a result, there are now 37 shelters, each of which can withstand up to 1,000 degrees Celsius for an extended period. Inside of each fire shelter, there are also phone lines to the central control facility along with firefighting equipment. Additionally, the rooms are linked together with an evacuation tunnel. 
To guarantee a safe escape in any future fire, the evacuation tunnel is attached to the shelters. Two evacuation tunnels were also added for a total of three, which double up as air vents. In addition, 76 steel fans have been added to pump air into the exhaust channel. During the fire, firefighters could not get their trucks into the tunnel due to the toxic smoke and lack of oxygen choking the engines. The roadways were also blocked by stalled vehicles. Subsequently, they too became stranded in the tunnel. There are now 78 small firefighting booths allowing responders to extinguish blazes from a protected spot. In addition, the tunnel now has its own dedicated firefighting team that remains on site. Furthermore, four water tanks were added to ensure there will always be enough water available, and a channel below the tunnel holds a water pipe. In 1999, the fresh air flowing into the tunnel followed the current wind direction that day. It pushed the smoke through the tunnel, smothering more people trapped inside. Now, overhead air accelerator fans and the exhaust channel are designed to mitigate that architectural flaw so that the air will keep flowing in the tunnel, even in the very center of the mountain. Trucks are now monitored for overheating at both the French and Italian entrances. Before the fire, no one took preventative measures to recognize emerging dangers. The newly decked out tunnel now has a network of sensors that constantly deliver data to the control facility. The first sensor is an infrared camera that scans all vehicles before entering the tunnel. This camera helps identify cars and trucks that may have overheating engines or problems inside of large loads being transported. If increased temperatures are measured, vehicles aren't allowed to enter until the issue has been resolved. Every three meters in the tunnel, there are smoke and fire detectors, 3,860 in total. These serve to sound a unified alarm to both countries when there is even a hint of fire inside. There is now a system of 20 radar units that monitor drivers to prevent accidents inside the tunnel. The speed limit is 70 kilometers an hour. Drivers must keep a distance of at least 150 meters from each other while driving. Traffic going in is now highly regulated. During the 1999 fire, cars on both sides continued entering and piled up into a traffic jam once they reached the fire. To never let that happen again, 20 traffic lights in each direction signal drivers to stop immediately if there's a problem ahead. In a worst-case scenario, the half barriers will go down, preventing cars from entering the tunnel. The fire shelters have warning lights that can be activated by the control facility. Drivers then have to leave their cars, exit the main tunnel, and enter the safety rooms. In a further effort to communicate with drivers, the tunnel is equipped with technology that can interrupt radio signals. So to get information, drivers just have to turn on their car's FM radio. The message will be broadcast across 12 FM channels. To this day, the exact cause of the Margarine's truck fire isn't known. Some have speculated it was due to mechanical failure. Others insist that another careless driver tossed out a lit cigarette that landed in just the wrong spot and ignited the truck. The 1999 Mont Blanc Tunnel Fire was absolutely a catalyst for change, leading to better conditions and stricter tunnel regulations all over the European Union. If you found this video interesting, now is the time to like and comment. Subscribe to see when my next documentary is up. Until then, you can take a look at this episode of Dark History.